What's up everybody, it's Dev Bird here, I'm your host Dev Bird, and today we have a special uh, episode where we have three games given to us by the community, and in this episode we're going to critique these games. Basically, the goal um, of this episode is to figure out um, what the flaws are in the design, and hopefully you'll come out as a better designer after this. So, that being said, um, let's get started. Alright, let's see. What the? Oh my, I'm... Wait, what? Alright, so the first game we have is called Chess Cubed, and... I'm not a very uh, good chess player, but I will say that I do play chess from time to time. I have a few friends that play chess, and while they're a lot better than me, I understand like the very basics of chess. And so, I was excited to play Chess Cube because, like, basically, what Chess Cubed is is a, uh, um, it's like regular chess except it's on a Rubik's cube, basically, where you can like rotate all these parts. And um, what's up? What really separates it is that you have these uh, systems like energy systems and you have health system and it's basically like 3D chess but with a lot of extra steps. And now after playing it I feel like I feel like I didn't get the experience I was expecting. Uh, the game felt kind of foreign to me like Like all the everything I knew about chess was just like flipped on its head. I feel like the one of the biggest problems in this game is that there's a lot of um, there's a lot of systems in this game that makes it feel really foreign to to regular chess players, and even like a grandmaster chess player would kind of feel lost in this. And I think your primary audience is going to be avid chess players who want uh, to play a game of chess with a little more flavor. And so I think you went too far and tried to making this like really competitive or I don't know, maybe that's your that was your approach. Um, but I think you went a step too far and made this game like super complex. You wanted to make it like as complex as you possibly can for the sake of having like a lot of replayability or like a lot of options and so people who like play it over and over again because there's so many things you can do there's so many advanced things you can do um, there's a lot of possibilities but you kind of you kind of got to the point where There's too many possibilities, and I felt like I was trying to figure out what move I wanted to do, but the more I thought about it, the more I realized how futile it was, because there's so many moves you could possibly make, and it's so impossible to like account for everything. So, the lesson from this game, you can take and you can put into other games, is that complexity isn't necessarily... A good thing. It doesn't always mean depth. It isn't always. It isn't always going to mean your game is going to be more fun. I think a better approach is to make your game simple, but with a lot of depth. That way, people can more easily understand it. And also has that replayability. Also has that thing that you want where. Is a uh, people will get better at it and want to play it more and more and try to get better. So I would try to dial it down. Personally, I would try to dial it down so it feels more like regular chess. Try to shave off some of the systems that you have. Um, I don't know. Exa I can't tell you like exactly how like okay. So reduce the amount of energy. Like no, I can't tell you that. But what I can say is that it does not feel anything like chess 
And I think you want some of that feeling inside this game. Any fuels? Can rocket blow him up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no! Oh, what? All right. So, game number two is um called Survivable, and. I can't comment too much on this game because I didn't play the multiplayer mode. Um, it's only local. And I will say that like local multiplayer is such a niche audience, but I can't say that it's bad or, or good um, just because I don't have enough insight on it. I'm sure that there's an audience for it, but obviously uh, online multi multiplayer is more optimal. Of course, like that's easier said than done. I'm trying to do networking is uh, very difficult I've tried and uh, I'm not quite there yet let me explain what server ball is so you're basically your little ball and you go through multiple levels and each level has like its own little mini game kind of and the goal is to survive and complete the objectives within that level so let's start off with uh, the good thing one, one thing that I really liked about this game was the tutorial level while it was very simple, I think these days most of us already know how to play games and if we're given a tutorial level that like kind of holds our hand and explains to us like okay use the left stick to move or use the or press A to interact some stuff like that we kind of get turned off because it's kind of like oh I already know it's like so it's so obvious to gamers it's like common sense almost to gamers and so it's almost insulting to like add a tutorial level that's like that it kind of just babies us and so what I really like about this uh, tutorial level is that it actually felt like a level they're teaching us how to play but they were also um challenging us so I died a lot in this uh, tutorial level and it which was surprising me but it also kind of got me prepared to to like what to expect moving on and it was also fun to play which is not something you often get from tutorial level so I would say that um, you try to mimic this style when you make a tutorial level Alright, so what's something I didn't like about this game was levels, um, they start off pretty slow, which was, the first time playing through was fine, because I was like, okay, I don't know what's going on here, the slow start lets me explore and understand what I'm supposed to do, because there's just no instructions, um, but it's kind of obvious what the goal is after a little bit and so it gives you time to figure that out and so you're chugging along and then you get to a point where it gets really hard after like a couple minutes and eventually you'll probably die and so when you die and when you lose um, you go all the way back to the start to the beginning of the level and I feel like Having to go through that very slow start over and over again really killed my um, desire to play the game, because it's just like so much downtime. Like I'm waiting minutes to get to where I was previously, and I think that you need to be really careful of how far you set your player back. I think having checkpoints within each level, like specifically for this game, having checkpoints within the level would uh, help a lot. But for every game, you wanna you wanna keep a close eye on the pacing of the game. If you see your player just like idly waiting there for long periods of time, or having to um, redo a lot of things that they already did, then you wanna probably take note of that because that's probably gonna make them feel frustrated, and you don't want that to happen. All 
right, so our third game is Escape from Tethys. I'm not sure if I say that right. But basically what this game is, is a 2D platformer, and I'd probably compare it the most to Mega Man. Um, so my first thoughts are is that I really like the art style. It's like really nice 2D pixel. Uh, I'm not sure you guys know, but I'm also a 2D pixel artist. Um, so I can really appreciate the style and the, um, more specifically, the color palette. Just like with the last game, I would say that the pacing of this game, um, kind of tapered off at some point. It was good at first, just like the first game, but then like, when you have to redo things, again, it's gonna kill the pacing of the game. And while I'm not like a huge, a huge 2D platformer person or gamer, um, I feel like even I should be able to do, should be able to get through the beginning like fairly easily. Um, you don't want to like make it the beginning so hard that it deters the player. So you have to think the beginning is like a hook, just like in a book. Um, I'm kind of random, but just like when you're writing an essay for school back back in school maybe you're in school, um, your teacher always tell you to start your essay off with a hook to engage your reader. And you want to do the same thing for games too. And I thought that the boss fight at the very beginning was actually really good because it acted as a hook. I was actually really um, enjoying that. And also, you, even though this is very basic, but you had the save point right before the boss, so it didn't feel frustrating to play. Because I died like a lot, but um, eventually I got the hang of it and killed him with ease. But you also want to have a save point right after the boss so you don't have to do the boss again in case you die immediately. Because I had to redo it because I didn't know the, where the save was. That's a like, very minute detail. Let's talk something more specific. Um, after the boss fight, which is still like the first couple minutes of the game, um, I was finding myself dying a lot and having to redo a lot of the parts of the game. And I felt like the the enemies just like while they weren't particularly strong, they kept dealing like a point of damage to me and that kinda added up. I felt like the there wasn't enough healing available in the game to mitigate that. And so I found myself dying a lot. And again, like while I was not a good two D platform player, I think anyone should be able to uh, do your the beginning of the levels like with ease, and then you slowly like ramp up the difficulty over time. So you want to like teach the player how to play, and have them get better as they play, not make it really difficult at the beginning, because it'll deter your player from playing the game. And so, because it was like really hard at the beginning. I found myself having to redo a lot of parts and then I just felt like I was just kept redoing, redoing, redoing and the pacing of the game kind of just like slowed down a lot because of that and I wasn't making uh, as much progression as I'd want or as fast as I'd want. So the takeaway from this is like, yeah, you want to make sure the pacing of the game is good by not having them redo points, so maybe like more checkpoints. But I think more importantly, um, for this game specifically, and what you want to do for your games is have have your have people who have never like played two D platformers play your game, or play have have people who've never played the genre of your game play your game, and see how they do at the beginning, and you want almost anyone to be able to like easily get through that game get through your game at the beginning and then slowly over time you want to make it a little bit di more difficult a little more difficult and you want to teach them how to play the game and eventually they'll enjoy it more because they're getting better and you're not hitting them with like 
a super hard mechanic at the beginning of the game or something like that. I think it's really, I think it's really easy to make your game super difficult at the beginning because you're always going to be, you yourself are always going to be um, your main tester. You're always going to be, you're going to be playing the game, your game the most. And so because of that, you're going to be naturally better at your own game. And also because you know like all the code and stuff. So there's no randomness involved really, since you know exactly what enemies can and can't do, what your character can and can't do. And so you'll play your own game, and then you'll kind of balance your game based off of your own abilities. And what you'll find, what will happen, is that the game is like far too difficult for regular people who have never played a game before. So you want to be really careful of that. And I would suggest you really want to have people play test your game, and you want to watch very carefully how they do. If they're dying a lot, that's a red flag. You want to make sure that people at the beginning, that they're not getting frustrated right off the bat. So when you want to have that hook, you want to get them hooked in, and you want to keep them hooked. Alright, before you guys go, I want to say thanks for watching, and please um, take a look at my Patreon. When I get to $100 total, well, not $100 per month, but when I get $100 total for my patron, I'm going to be hosting a game jam. And it's going to be a 24-hour game jam. And I'll be the judge, and the winner will receive uh, most of that money, but I'm also probably going to be split it between first, second, and third place. Um, so if you want to donate to my patron, every penny counts. Um, become a patron, you also get access to my Discord. But to be honest, if you don't have any money and want, still want access to my Discord, just uh, send me a message on Discord. Um, I'll have my username like in the description below, or maybe I'll put it on the screen, who knows. And uh, if you have any suggestions for me improving the series, let me know. And that's it. See you guys later.